I call the member for Corwell. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, October 23rd, marked the 75th anniversary of the Second Battle of El Alamein, where in 1942 Australian diggers as part of the Allied forces won a decisive battle against the German and Italian armies during World War II. October 31st will mark the 100th year anniversary since the charge of the Australian 4th Light Brigade in Bathsheba in 1917 in a make-or-break battle for the Allied forces campaign in Palestine, and one that is described by some as Australia's first big achievement on the world stage. It is indeed an important time to reflect on the courage and sacrifices of Australian soldiers in theatres of war, to reflect on the debt we owe them as a nation and to honour their memories. On Sunday, I attended an event highlighting the important contribution Australians of Greek heritage have made in our war efforts. An estimated 2,500 Australians of Hellenic background fought in World War II, some of whose ancestral homeland was the Ionian island of Lefkada, which happens to be my place of birth. Amongst them was Gunner James Zambellis from the 2nd 2nd Field Regiment of the Australian Army's 6th Division, who died in the Battle of Crete. 524 diggers died in the Greek campaign, and only one of those was of Hellenic heritage, and that was Gunner James Zambellis. In his message to the Lefkadian Cultural Association's event honouring James Zambellis, the leader of the opposition, Bill Shorten, said, and I quote, James's story and that of his parents is emblematic of many migrants who came to Australia, committed their lives to building and enriching our nation, participating in all aspects of our national life and giving the ultimate sacrifice, fighting for the beliefs and values that we all hold dear. James's father, Gerasimo Zambelis, migrated to Australia in 1903 from the village of Marandohori in Lefkada. James was the second born of his three children. His father ran a cafe in St Kilda. Cafes and restaurants would become a Zambelli's family tradition to this very day. James was 26 when he joined the Royal Australian Artillery in November 1939, and according to historian Jim Claven, James had survived many deadly, many deadly battles that had claimed the lives of many Anzacs leading up to the fatal morning in Crete. It was the 24th of May 1941 when James and other diggers found themselves on the outskirts, on the, outskirts of the village of Muniz. The men had assembled for the morning parade at 6.30 a.m. when the German plane struck, killing four soldiers and wounding several more. James was one of those killed. He was 28 years old. One officer wrote of this account of the attack that claimed James's life, and I quote, a fierce bombing attack which killed Jim and several lads. They were all killed instantaneously, and that evening they were buried by men of the regiment. James was survived by his wife Doris and son Peter. Members of the Zambellis family were present on Sunday, including his son Peter, who were all profoundly moved by the honour bestowed on James's memory. I want to thank the president of the Lufkadian Cultural Association, Olga Vlachos, and especially Claire Gazis for all her incredible research on the diggers of Greek background. And of course, historian Jim Claven, who has dedicated his life researching and writing about the shared war experiences between Australian and Greek soldiers. Speaker, there's another Aussie digger that I want to pay tribute to this evening, and his name is Les Manning. Les passed away last Wednesday at the age of 104. He was an energetic, sprightly man with a youthful outlook on life and a very sharp mind to match. Les was one of the last surviving Anzacs from the Battle of Crete, who was a long-standing friend of the Greek community and was revered by the Cretan community in Australia, particularly by those in Melbourne. And as my friend John Rurakis said of him in his tribute this week, Les Manning was an Australian treasure who, at 26, left his wife and child behind to go send Hitler a message. Quote unquote. It would be remiss of me not to mention Les's unwavering love of the Richmond Football Club, who, along with the Greek community of Melbourne, are mourning the loss of their oldest fan. In fact, last year, on the eve of his 103rd birthday, which he celebrated at Punt Road, he said, and I quote, Richmond better win a flag because I'm running out of time. I've only got about 15 years left in me. Thankfully, Les got to see his beloved Tigers take home the AFL Premiership last month. Uh, speaker, as someone who had the honour of meeting Les Manning, I want to express my sincere condolences to his family and to thank him for his service. Vale Les Manning. 